take their belt and tie it up real tight because they didn't want these things around them weighing them down. If they could, they would just shed their clothes and they would run because those things weigh them down. And in life, in pursuing God, we have things that weigh us down oftentimes. We want to enjoy the comforts of the world. But those things can weigh us down. Fancy cars cost money and it takes time to make money. Fancy houses take money and it takes time to make money and you only got so much time. You got to figure out how to spend it. God's called you to run this race. The, most, the, the best picture of this that I see is reading about Moses, whom chapter 11 it says that he left the pleasures of Pharaoh's court. He wouldn't stay there, but he identified with God's people, escaping these fleeting pleasures of sin because he knew there was a better reward in being identified with God's people. He knew that although it's not as comfortable now, if I'll just shed these comforts for now and run this race, the reward will be so much greater. And it goes for that in life. Don't, I'm not saying don't enjoy life. We should enjoy life. God put us here to enjoy it and to enjoy Him. But don't enjoy it to the point where it slows you down. Keep your priorities straight. Keep what's number one, number one. And if there's time for enjoying those things, and you can do those without it slowing you down, then do that. If it's not going to take away from you pursuing God to get the nice car, do that. If it's not going to take away from you pursuing God to enjoy a wonderful home, do that. But those are secondary. As Hebrews 11 says here, we are exiles and strangers on this earth. Our real home is somewhere else and there will be an amazing comfort there. Shed those comforts for now and pursue Him. Run the race. Strengthen the muscles you need, not the muscles you don't. Pursue God. Now, the other thing you're going to have to lay aside he says you got to lay aside every sin. Now, the weights are things that slow you down. Sin, sins are things that will disqualify you. All right? The word sin, it literally means to miss the mark. All right? It goes back to this idea of it being an archer's turn. And when guys would shoot arrows, and if they didn't hit their target, they sinned. They missed their mark. But in the spiritual life, it is missing that mark which God has for you. And if you miss that mark that God has for you, you will be disqualified from the race. Now, when I think of sin, I think of two areas of sin. Sins of commission and sins of omission. Sins that we commit, that we do. And then the sin of things that we should have done but we didn't do. One sin in races, things that will disqualify you from a race, that I would classify as a sin of commission, would be a false start. Jump in the gun. If you went to a track meet and you watch the guy hold the pistol up and everyone's on the blocks and they're starting and he's about to pull the trigger and someone takes off just a split second before you hear the gun go bam, bam and he pulls it again and everyone stops and then he calls out what lane he's in. That guy realizes I jumped the gun. He goes, he picks up his blocks and he walks off the track because he's just been disqualified from the race. A false start or jumping the gun will disqualify you from the race. What do I mean by that? I mean not waiting for God's leading in life. An example, Abraham and Sarah. God says, I'm going to give you a son. They laughed at first. And God says, no, I'm serious. They went, oh. So they waited for this son to come, but he wasn't coming fast enough. So Sarah says, you know what, Abraham? Why don't you take my maidservant Hagar? And why don't you have a son through her? Maybe that's, I mean, maybe it's just kind of this indirect son thing. So he, go, he does, and they have Ishmael. Well, God promised the son to Abraham and Sarah. Not Abraham and Hagar. But they jumped the gun, and you know what? The Jews to this day are paying for that mistake. There's fighting going on in the Middle East. Who do you think it's between? 
the descendants of Isaac and the descendants of Ishmael. The Muslims are descendants of Ishmael. That's the difference. They both go back to Abraham, but one group thinks the promise is through Ishmael, the other one thinks the promise is through Isaac. They shouldn't have jumped the gun. Those type of things disqualify you from the race. You have to wait for God's leading in your life. Another thing that can disqualify you in a race is dropping the baton. You know the thing they carry in the relays? If you drop the baton, you're out of the race. That's the whole point. You've got to carry this baton around, hand it to the next person, carry it. And in reality, it's the team that crosses the line with the baton first. The first baton across the line wins. It's not just the first team, because you can cross the line, but if you're not carrying that baton, you don't win. And you know what? You can do amazing things in life, but if you forget to carry this thing God's called you to carry, called the gospel, if you forget to carry that in life, what's the point? God has called you to carry the good news to people. Many times we get in such a hurry that we forget what we are here for. I'm in such a hurry to go to church that the guy stopping me in the parking lot who needs $5 to feed his family, I pass up. I say, I'm sorry, I, I gotta get to church. I gotta go serve God. <laughs> when Jesus made it clear that when you fed those type of people, you were actually feeding him. You know, I know so and so's in prison, but I don't have time to visit him because I have to leave Bible study. But Jesus said, when I was in prison, you visited me. They said, when did we do that? He said, whatever you have done to the least of these, you have done to me. When you take the good news to the poor, to the outcast, to the downtrodden, to people who haven't heard it before, you are doing God's work. That's what he has called you to do. Don't get so hung up and going so fast through life and pursuing God that you forget how to pursue Him, that you drop the baton. It's not about you getting through life the fastest. It's about you coming to know the God who is leading you in this race. There's another thing that will disqualify you in the race, and it's stepping outside of your lane. Especially during the relays. Now, there's some races, the long ones, where they let you, you know, go into the short lane. You want to get there as fast as possible. But if you're in a relay, they stagger you out, so you're all running the same distance. But if you step in someone else's lane, you're disqualified. Why are you disqualified? Because now you're interfering with their race. That's why God gave us the law. In fact, I think I talked about that last time. <laughs> is the law that he's given us is so that we know how to pursue God. It's like the curbs on a street. As long as you stay between the curbs, keep it between the lines, an old country song used to say. <coughs> keep it between the lines, keep it between the curbs. You're going to do okay. Stay on this path. But when you step over that, now you're interfering on someone's race. That's why you read through the Ten Commandments and it says things like, thou shalt not murder. Because now I'm interfering with that man's race. That woman's race. Don't steal. I'm interfering with their race. Don't gossip. Don't, 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 all of the, don't interfere on other people's race because God values that person in the same way he values you. That's why Genesis 9 says if you murder someone, if a man takes another man's blood, by men shall his life be taken. Because men are created in the image of God. Don't interfere with other people's race. That will disqualify you. That is called sin. You are missing the mark that God has for you. When you come into other people's lives, you do things to bring them along in the race with you. Don't hinder them. Now, what causes you to step outside of your lane? Easy things, like just... A lack of focus. Not focusing on what God has for you. Alright? You have too many distractions in life. We talked about these things before. The weights. It might be too much TV. It might be a boyfriend, a girlfriend. It might be the wrong job. An extra job you don't need. It might be the extra four-wheelers. Whatever that is. 
It's a lack of focus. What is stealing your focus? It might be the wrong focus. You're not focusing on those things God's called you to do. You're building those other muscles. All right? Or it might be that you get tripped up. There's things in your life that seem to trip you up on a regular basis. Then we're talking about the guys in Rome that used to run the races. They would take their robe and they would pull it up around them and use their belt to tie it. You know why? Have you ever tried to... I'm not a woman and I've never worn a skirt. But is there any ladies in here that have tried to run in a skirt? No one? Okay. Is it difficult to run in a skirt? No. You tend to get tripped up?